رحیم رب شرحلی صدری و یسرلی امری وحل لقدتم من لسانی یفقہ قولی رب زدنی علما اللہ مہد قلبی و صدد لسانی وصل سقیمت قلبی آمین سم آمین انشاءاللہ we will do دعا نمبر 22 today الحمدللہ it's a very important دعا for all the believers specially اللہم آت نفسی تقواہا O oh Allah, grant my soul its piety. Allahumma, O oh Allah, aati means grant. Nafsi, my soul or my nafs. Taqwaha, its piety, its taqwa. Break up of the dua. Allahumma is one word, which means O oh Allah. Aati is a verb, one word, which means grant. Nafsi has two words in it, nafs and then the same ya which we use for I, my. So soul, my or I. So to my soul, to give it a proper formatting. Taqwa, ha. So it has two words in it. Taqwa is one word, which means piety, taqwa, uh, consciousness of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And ha is its. And this ha is referring to nafs. Okay, so it's uh, going here. Nafs is a feminine. So in Arabic, you will see two kind of pronouns. One is who and one is her. So who it refers to masculine and her refers to feminine. So nafs is a feminine in Arabic. So that's why we are using her here. So let's see the hadith of this dua. Zaid bin Alkam reported, I'm not going to say anything but only that which Allah's Messenger, may Allah, may peace be upon him, used to say. He used to supplicate, O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from incapacity, from sloth, from cowardice, from miserliness, decre uh, decrepitude, and from torment of the grave. And then this dua, O oh Allah, grant my soul the sense of righteousness and purify it, and for thou art the best purifier thereof. You are the protecting friend thereof and guardian thereof. O oh Allah, I seek refuge in you from the knowledge which does not benefit, from the heart that, that does not entertain the fear of Allah, from the soul that does not feel contented, and the supplication that is not responded. So in this dua, we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, to bless us the quality of taqwa. Why? To bring quality in our good deeds. There is one hadith of Abu Sayyid Khudri. He was one of the a companion, a companion of Prophet Sallallahu So he once visited Prophet Sallallahu and he asked him, Oh Prophet, please advise me something. So Prophet Sallallahu told him, I advise you to have taqwa of Allah Subhanahu wa ta'ala because it is the root cause of every good deed. So what is taqwa actually? Taqwa is consciousness. Consciousness of having the feeling that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is watching me. So if you write three sentences for yourself that explains taqwa very nicely. Number one is, Allah is watching me. Allah is al-basir. Allah is listening, whatever I'm saying. So Allah is As-Sami, and then Allah knows. Allah is Allah Bulhuyu. So these three sentences explain taqwa beautifully. Let me explain with an example that whenever you're doing anything and you have this feeling and you have this, uh, um, you know, you feel that Allah is watching me, then you are very careful about your actions. If you are scribbling here and there, you said, okay, you know, nobody knows my name, nobody knows who is doing it. But 
a person who has taqwa, he will know that if nobody knows, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows. Sometimes we enter room with different IDs, different names, and we think nobody knows about it. Yes, nobody, maybe a, a human uh, will not know about it. But Allah knows that I have changed my ID, I have changed, you know, my name, or whatever reason. So a person who has taqwa, he is not scared of people. He's not thinking about people. He's not thinking that, you know, I can make anyone fool and, you know, do whatever I like. He's always focusing on this thought that Allah is watching me. He's al-basir. And then whenever that person is saying something, he's very conscious about his speech also, that Allah is listening. Allah is as sami So whatever I'm uttering, even though it, even if, if, if it is a meaningful word or a meaningless word, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is listening. So the person who has taqwa automatically filters his speech from all the lies, from, you know, frauds, from anything which is wrong, anything which is not liked by Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala, anything which is haram. Then third, Allah, Allah knows. Allah is Allah mul huyub, which means Allah has knowledge of everything. We go through ups and downs in our life a lot of times. Sometimes we have good days, sometimes we have bad days. So a person who has, who has taqwa, he always thinks about Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. And he says, you know what, whatever I'm going through, Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala knows about it. So I have to return to him. I have to repent. I have to make dua. And then this feeling, brings quality in his salah, in his du'as, in his recitation of the Qur'an. So taqwa is three things. I will repeat one more time. Taqwa means Allah is watching. Taqwa means Allah is listening. Taqwa means Allah, is, Allah, Allah knows everything. So if you write these three sentences and you start practic practicing upon them, then inshallah, the dua which, are, which we are making, we will get whatever we are asking Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. Then another uh, thing which we learn about taqwa is that it is important to get guidance from the Quran. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala says in Quran, This is the book which has guidance for the, for the people who have taqwa in, in, in them. So if you want to get guidance from Quran, if you want to practice Quran, if you want to understand Quran, if you want to make Quran an important and vital part of your life, then you need to have the quality of taqwa because only the muttaqeen, only the people who have taqwa, who have piety, who, have, who are on the righteous path, they will get guidance from the Quran. May Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala bless us. Taqwa. Ameen. Inshallah. Okay. So here is again the breakup of the dua. Allahumma o Allah, aati grant nafsi to my soul. Taqwa ha, it's piety. Okay. Let me take some students who can read. Inshallah. Fakiha uh, and Azka. Yes. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. Oh Allah, make my soul is piety. Excellent. Your sister wants to read? Yes. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. Oh, awesome. Allah, grant my soul its piety. Very good. Okay, Zainabali. Very good. Barakallah feek. Okay. Saadi Imran. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum Mahnoor, I remember your name now. <laughs> yes, Mahnoor. Allahumma aati nafsi taqwaha. Oh Allah, my soul is 
I also have one question. Mm -hmm. um, so about our du'as, what if you are the du'as and our du'as? So where are the du'as and our du'as book, but what if you don't call it? Is that still okay? Can you repeat your question? Um, what if like we do our duas and our duas book, but don't like like post it or like email to you? Is that still okay, or do we have to email? Um, it's it's actually a bonus project, so if you will do it, you will get bonus marks, inshallah. Okay. It's the duas. Okay. Yes. So if you will post, you know, as I asked before, that at least fifteen. Alhamdulillah, we will complete twenty-five duas. But at least 15 du'as, I want you to write and email us, inshallah. Okay? Barakallah. Okay. Abdul Rahman. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum salam. Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha. Oh Allah, grant my soul its piety. Can you mute yourself? Okay. Uh, okay. Abdul Hanan, Anisa. Yes. Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha. Oh Allah, grant my soul its piety. Okay. Yes. Hanan? So who? You are Anisa? You are Hanan? She's, she's Anisa. I'm Abdul Hanan in the last one of the Rahman. Okay, okay, yes, Hanan, go ahead. Allahumma ati nafsi taqwaha. Oh Allah, grant my soul its piety. Excellent. Okay, Abdul Rahman. Allahumma ati ati nafsi taqwaha. Very good. Oh Allah, grant my soul piety. Okay, let's revise some du'as and then inshallah we'll continue with our tafsir class. Rumesa. Allahumma inni as'aluka ilman nafiyan. Oh Allah, I ask for beneficial knowledge. Very good. Good girl. Mariam Bakai. Allahumma inni ashadu ka ilma nafiyan. Oh Allah, I ask you for beneficial, for beneficial knowledge. Good. Can call. you... um? Uh, oh, sorry, Vita. Yes? Uh, can you um uh, update the du'a diaries? Can you update the du'a diaries? Yeah, they, all the du'as are not there. It's only from 1 to 11. Oh, okay. So on the course portal? Okay, inshallah, I'll do it. Okay, okay I'll do it. Inshallah. Yeah, right. Maryam Iman, Maryam Kostar Iman. Yes. Allahumma inna ka atuun tuhibbul afwa fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, indeed you are the one who forgives. You love to forgive, so forgive me. Very good. Labiba al Allahumma inna ka afu wan tuhibbu la afu fa'afu anni. Oh Allah, indeed you are the one who forgives. You love to forgive, so forgive me. Very good. Barakallah fiqh. Minha shia. Oh Allah, you, oh sorry, sorry, I'm saying that. Okay, I'm saying Allahumma inneke afu want to hebbul afwa fa'fun inni. Fa'fu anni. Oh, fa fa'fu an anni. Very good. Oh, oh, oh Allah, indeed you are the one who forgives. You love to forgive, so forgive me. Okay, very good, Minha, mashallah. Allah wa barik. Okay, inshallah, my dear students, we'll stop here for today. Alhamdulillah, our dear sister Maryam is here. So inshallah, we will continue with our juz number 25 today. Allah mubarak. Subhanakallahum wa bihamdika. Ashadu an la ilaha illa anta. Astaghfiruka wa atubu ilik. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Sister Maryam, over to you.
Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. So inshallah, I'm going to just open the slides and I want to show you some uh, inshallah stars and some interesting things inshallah today. So just listen to the Qirat for a minute till I get it sorted. All right, inshallah. الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر الله أكبر ولله الحمد الله أكبر الله أكبر الله أكبر لا إله إلا الله الله أكبر السلام عليكم ورحمة الله وبركاته جزاكم الله خيرا كثيرا for your patience so alhamdulillah we have our Quran projects inshallah so just wanted to show you quickly. So I'm gonna go over them really quickly. Just uh, have a look and you would be able to see which project is yours, inshallah. So starting from here, our Musaf projects, alhamdulillah. Every student has an amazing Musaf and I really like that some of them has some writing on it. So it seems that you guys are studying very nicely. And some of them have noticed that maybe you, you are using your parents' Musafs. So I think it's a good idea to have your own How's that, inshallah? This one is really nice. It has translation and it has like, um, I think brief tafsir at the bottom. It's very, very nice. And then this is also very cool. This is a tajweed one, very good. This is another tajweed one. Alhamdulillah, this has a name on it. So this is very nice. Uh, this is also very good. I also have a similar one. And these are very cute, alhamdulillah. And this is very cool. Whose is it? <laughs> Raise your hand, cool. Okay, and this is also word to word. This is very nice. And um, this is also a Tajweed one, Alhamdulillah. And this is a sister as well with the Mushaf. And here we go with the flower, very nice photography, good. And Alhamdulillah, this is also very nice. It has translation, but it is it has Urdu translation. Can you read Urdu? Or not even Urdu, some other language. No, I think it's Urdu. And this is a golden one. And this is Brother Bilal's Mushaf. This is the Tajweed one. And this is also a very good one. This is also a Tajweed one. Alhamdulillah, all of them are really amazing. All of them are words of Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala. So all of them are amazing, Alhamdulillah. It has some Arabic tafsir at the bottom as well. Can you read Arabic? Whoever's Mushaf is this? That's good, this is amazing. This is only 30 adjusts. So what about the rest of it? You have the rest, right? Hopefully, inshallah. 
And this is a very nice, cute pink one. This is a brown one, which is very nice. It also has some, uh, you know, designs on it, which is cool. Okay, we have a golden one. And this is very unique. I haven't seen anything like this before. So this is quite nice. This is a very good Tajweed one. This, I don't get where the Mustafa is. I think it was too close of a picture. So maybe the student is holding it. So maybe the brown one is the Mustafa, maybe it's black, but it's nice. And I'm gonna, this is also very nice. This is a very, uh, this is also very um, good and size is big. So size is good. This is also beautiful. I think it also has, um, it says Quran voice word by word. So I don't know how the voice works, but this is cool. This is, um, again, the Tajweed one. This is also very nice. It seems like this student is maybe memorizing or resetting Quran a lot because, you know, Quran has been used, which is good, which is a very good sign. Alhamdulillah. Okay. Okay. We have done this one. Okay, this one is very nice. This one has Surah al kahf open, very smart. This is another Mus'haf. This is another Mus'haf, mashallah. This is very nice. This is like a nice way to take a um, picture, right? Look at this, very smart. So maybe next time when you take pictures, you can also add some, you know, perks here and there and some nice props here and there. This is cool. I think it's Brother Abdurrahman's Right, Brother Abdul Rahman, it's your word-to-word um, -word translation, which is beautiful. This is our sister, Maria Mali. And this is our um, maroon Tajweed Quran. I really like the color, nice. And this is the tafsir. And I think this brother is also memorizing because look at the mushaf, but alhamdulillah, as long as it's in your heart, that's good. Protect your mushafs, keep them protected. And this is very nice. There's a message as well. Quran is the guidance for mankind, which is like amazing. And it's also a very nice way to take a picture. And this is another Mus'haf, alhamdulillah. This is a very um, uh, rusty color, nice. And this is a blue one from inside, cool. This is color-coded Tajweed one. This is also Tajweed one. There's variety, did you notice? SubhanAllah. And this is from inside uh, one of the Mus'hafs. This is another one, alhamdulillah. This is a maroon one. I'm gonna go a little fast now. These are Tajweed ones. This is very nice. It seems like it's a picture from the internet. Hopefully not, but that's nice. And this is a maroon one. This Because we're supposed to submit our own Mosaf's picture, remember? All right, so here we go. Nice. And now let's move on. This says Maryam on it. This is very nice. And then we have a Tajweed one. Then we have this with nice flowers on him. So I think it was the flowers were placed for the picture which is very nice and um this is with the seer which is great i actually with with third uh, with translation and this is also very nice i really like that you know allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name is highlighted in red did you notice that so in some mushafs you would notice that allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's name is highlighted in red this is a green mushaf this is a blue mushaf this is a colorful mushaf it has stars on it so it's nice this is a red one this is a blue one and then we have a small handy one with a leather pouch. And this one is, um, look at the glitters. Like, look at the bookmarks for, you know, those small things sticking out from the sides. These are very nice. I really like that. This is blue, alhamdulillah. This is another blue mushaf. And this is a nice way to take picture. So maybe this brother or sister has a nice backdrop of Kaaba's, um, you know, doors, kiswa. So that person, that student put the Musaf in front. That's nice. That's another Musaf picture. This is another brother with Mus brother Yusuf with Musaf. And then this is a blue Musaf. This is a colorful one. And this is a sister with the Musaf. And look at her masjid. I really like her area. And look at, her, look at the du'as, which she's learning from Sister Shadi's class. Cool, right? Alhamdulillah. Another one, black one. Alhamdulillah, we are done. So barakullah fikum. So there were 83 pictures altogether. Alhamdulillah. So they were submitted last week. Okay. So I did not download anything after that. So this was from last week. Okay. Let's begin. Today we are going to inshallah talk about a few more things and learn about a few more things. Just 25 only. Alhamdulillah. So let's begin. Nahmaduhu wa nusalli ala rasulihi al-kareem. Amma ba'ad. Fa'a'udhu billahi minash shaytwan al-rajim. Bismillahir Rahmanir Rahim. 
ربي اشرح لي صدري ويسر لي أمري وحل الأقدة من لساني يفقه قولي ربنا زدنا علما اللهم فقهنا في الدين آمين May Allah give us the correct understanding of the deen and may Allah enable us to benefit from these classes Ameen Let's begin So we are, we are done with most of projects Yes, just one suggestion If you really, really want a gift from your parents Maybe this Eid, you can ask them to buy you your personal one if you don't have one yet. If you already have one, amazing, no problem. But if you're sharing one with them, maybe this is the time that you should have your own. And if it has translation, that's even better, inshallah. And have like a, a, like a sturdy copy that you can keep reusing it and keep opening it and keep memorizing from it, inshallah. Okay, that's just a suggestion if you want that. Now we have research stars today, the ones who actually looked for the ayahs in the Quran and tried to reduce the lessons from Ayatul Nur project and also from the other 10 advices project. Okay, the names are Parmish Ali, Mina Ikhlas, Zain Tashreen, Amina Umar, Saliha Mahmood, Kevin Khan, Hania Usman, Maryam Umar, Safiya Ashfaq, Aiza Fatima, Nusrat Begum, Abdullah Tashreen, Shazneen Sheikh, Minha Sheikh, Labiba Altaf, Muhammad Umar, Hamza Hussein, Had, um, Hadiqa Basharat, Anam Sheikh, Khadija Ahmad, Ifat Azim, Zainab Yusuf Ali, Asreen Fatima Baksh, Aisha Farooq, Laiba Sabi, and they, there was another sister, Asma. I don't have her last name, that's why I did not post it up here. All right, so we were talking about, uh, some of the students were asking about the cool fact to do with Surah Fusilat. So I forgot to give it to you yesterday. This is right here. Angels are friends of steadfast believers. Okay, this is the cool fact which we find in Surah Fusilat about angels and the cool believers and the true believers. So let's look at Juz 25 today. Juz 25 has only five surahs, and these five surahs are Surah Fusilat, Surah Ashura, Surah Az Zukhruf, Surah Ad Dukhan, and Surah Ad Jasiyah. Fusilat means explained in detail. We talked about it yesterday. And all of these five surahs are Makki surahs. Ashura means consultation. You know, when you talk to someone and consult, that is consultation. Understood? Yes or no? Because we're going to talk about consultation a lot today. And you will become one wise person if you're going to pay attention. Because this surah gives us such beautiful advices, such amazing, uh, you can say, decision-making solutions to our problems that you would feel really, really smart, which is great, alhamdulillah. Quran does make us smart, and that is uh, something which we need to attain from it or need to achieve from the sessions to do with the Quran. A zukhruf means gold ornament, right? Like gold jewelry, gold ornament, something gold. A dukhan is smoke, and a jathia is kneeling, the state when you are on your knees, kneeling down, right? or crouching. So kneeling was an easier word for you guys to remember, inshallah. All right, so Surah Fusilat did not complete itself in just 24, so it is carrying it over to just 25. So we're gonna look at some few, some important verses to do with the conclusion of Surah Fusilat, which are very relevant for all of us. Ayah number 49 of Surah Fusilat, write it down. Let's understand it, because it's it talks about a behavior, it talks about how people react in different situations and what Allah likes and what Allah doesn't like, all right? Because we want to become Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favorites. That's our goal. Is it? Is it your goal? Do you want to be Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favorite? If you are Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's favorite, your life will be beautiful and your afterlife will be amazingly beautiful. So what else do you want? That's all. So this, this year, if you can keep asking Allah for this, if we can keep making this dua with Sister Shazia taught us, Ij'alni Rabbi Radiya, oh Allah, make me your favorite. Inshallah, Allah will accept it for, for all of us. And then you will see success. You will see a lot of success in this world and a lot of success in the hereafter, inshallah. So alhamdulillah for Quran and alhamdulillah for such amazing duas. All right, so this ayah talks about, and not just this, the, the set of ayahs, even after these, after this ayah, man is not weary of supplication for good things, but if evil touches him, he is hopeless and he's despairing. So what do we learn? In different phases of our life, we make du'as, right? And we are never tired of asking for more and more. It not only means that we make du'a du'a, 
it means that we're always demanding something else. Like let's say if you're if you're a kid, then we want what games, then we want what good grades, right? And then we, when we are a little older, then we want what car or motorbike or something bigger, right? A phone, cell phone. When we are older than that, then we want a job. Or before that, we want to get in university. Then we want a job. And when we are when we have a job, then what do we want? We keep on asking for more and more. I need this, I need that. And you know, sometimes when we're making du'as, what do we say? Oh, it's the last thing I'm asking for. Never say that because it's never last. But ever you get, you want something else after that. This is how people are. This is how humankind is. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala is saying. Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't dislike this. But what is disliked is, which is coming in the next part of this verse. So when we grow older, then we want family. Then we want to, like, if there's a guy, then he wants a wife. And if it's a girl, then she wants a husband. And of course, that doesn't stop there. Then they want their children. And they don't stop there. Then they want the happiness of their children. And then they don't stop, they don't stop there either. Then they want their kids to um, be around them when they're older. And, you know, when they're older, they want health now. So maybe before they, want, they wanted wealth all this life. But now when they're getting older, they want health. Maybe when they were younger, they were not taking care of their health, but now they realize, but it's too late. But a person or a humankind is something or someone's, they always are asking for more and more. They never get satisfied with Allah has given them. So that is something which is okay as long as we're satisfied. So keep asking, doesn't matter, but be happy with whatever you have got. But when this person, you know, goes through some tough times, then this person leaves all hope leaves all hope like okay that's it it's the end game i'm just i'm just doomed and there's nothing good in future for me i'm a bankrupt now so i will never come out of this situation so don't ever become like that and sadly we have seen many examples like that very smart people very intelligent people as well when they lose some money just some money one job they act as if it's the end of the world they act as if this is it. This is what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala doesn't like. Because we need to remember good times are also a test and bad times are also a test. Easy times, financially easy times are also a test. Financially hard times are also a test. Pass them both and then you will be successful. And let's see what happens next. And if we let him taste mercy from us. So let's say this person went through some tough times, but then Allah gave him more. Then Allah gave him more. Allah um, blessed him with his mercy. So me, it, let's say it was, if it was a financial situation, Allah uh, gave him a job again. Then what happens? Then he becomes arrogant. Then he says, this is due to me. And I don't think the hour will occur. And even if it should occur, I will get better. Indeed, for me, there will be with Allah the best. But we will surely inform those who disbelieved about what they did we will surely make them taste a massive punishment. So what is this like is that when you're out of your problem, be it your health problem, your financial problem, maybe your grades issue, it is possible that in one year of your school, you keep on failing. You keep on scoring really, really bad. So when you come out of that situation, let's say you start scoring better. Let's say you start getting um, you know, better at everything, at maths, at science, and you start getting, you can say, uh, different types of um, positions and roles in school as well, then don't forget that they are from Allah. Because sometimes what do people do? When they get something and they start saying, oh, I deserved it. Oh, I earned it. I worked so hard for it. Is it something liked or not? Tell me. Is it something which is suitable for a human being to say? No, we f sadly, we forget about our past very fast. We are really quick in forgetting what exactly we were. Because when we were sick, we had no energy to even walk. When we were sick or when we were financially down, we had no money to even buy a gift for someone or maybe some food for ourselves. But subhanAllah, we forget. And then we start saying, Hada li, this is for me, I deserve it. Or this is because of me, because I work so hard. These are the two wrong behaviors. And that person becomes what? That person forgets about Qiyama. That person thinks that, okay, now everything is cool. So let me go back to entertainment life. 
let me go back to haram life let me become the way i was because when things were not great when this person was sick or going through tough times that person maybe was more inclined towards allah maybe asking allah for help and maybe going to masjid as well but when things become easy that person forgets about akhira and starts doing the haram activities and then that person assumes that he will also get jannah because things are getting better so that person assumes that this is a reward from allah but that's not how it works if we get benefits in this world if we get some blessings in this world this is not reward remember that this is never reward this is always a test even if you're flourishing like anything all right even if you have most money even if you have amazing health even if you have beautiful family even if you are very uh, charming or what not all of this is test this is not your result because dunya is not for result dunya is just to test and what will happen to these people because they used to assume wrong stuff they used to say okay if i will be raised back if so what does it show they don't believe in the day of judgment so just because they don't believe in the day of judgment their actions are called kufr the actions are called kufr so they will be showed their sins that this is what you did and then they they will pay they will taste the punishment which is going to be massive may allah save us from the punishment of hell fire and now let's see what happens and when allah bestows favor upon man he turns away and distances himself so one is that that person becomes literally like a kafir he becomes like okay i don't believe in akhir anymore i'm getting gifts right here my hard work paid off right here in this world so that is one behavior another is this person he turns away from allah and he distances himself from away from away from allah and when evil touches him then he is full of extensive supplication then he makes very good du'as so when he is blessed with a lot of money fame power friends happy life party life that person forgets about masjid forgets about islam forgets about quran forgets about parents rights everything and then feels like that he is doing great and then he also distances himself from allah so first he arada turns away turns away as in like i don't care distances like goes really really far never even bothers to open quran never even bothers to do something good i just busy in his own entertainment own life and when something evil comes his way because this is how it is you don't always stay all you know rich forever and you don't always stay all poor forever these are all tests you don't always stay all healthy forever and you don't always stay all sick forever alhamdulillah for that and things change so we are not sick forever alhamdulillah so but the problem is when problems touch a person he becomes very very amazing at his duas well this is not disliked this is not disliked what is disliked is when we get blessings back we forget about allah that is disliked we should not become like uh, you know this person right here not like him that forgetting about salah time forgetting about quran classes forgetting about rights of other people forgetting about charity we should not become that rather we should stay good even after we have wealth so we should have the same type of behavior even if we are you know enjoying our life with money and health or if you're suffering either way keep making duas keep coming back to allah keep fulfilling your duties and then you can also enjoy your life in halal way sura ashura sura to shura all right so what is the cool fact about it sins are a cause of trials when we sin then we go through trouble because of our own sins so it's not that allah subhanahu wa taala wants to torture us sometimes not all the time sometimes there are our own sins and we can reflect and we can analyze our lives and we can actually figure it out as well sometimes we would figure it out right away that oh yes i did that thing wrong i said that thing wrong that's why i'm going through this did you ever realize that in your life that you did something wrong and you went through the same 
You said something wrong and you went through the same. I have seen so many examples like that. And I've also experienced in my life as well. Whenever we are arrogant and we say some statements of arrogance, they come back to haunt us. So there was this lady and um, she was like, she used to like mock at others so much, right? So there was this lady and she, you know, it's a true thing, true story, or you can say true incident. So she mocked at someone who got her daughters married to like, you know, not so handsome looking guys, right? So you're like, okay, this is what you did. Like your daughters are really pretty and you picked these guys for them and something like that, right? Just very demeaning. And even though we know Islamically, looks don't matter. What matters is, you know, our akhlaq, our deen, right? That matters. Looks don't matter. Like, you know, if someone's very nice and handsome and is really evil inside and is really uh, rude and really abusive, then it's better to avoid that person. Even if that person looks like, like, I don't know who, some type of king or prince or whatever. So we should, you know, not even bother about looks. But anyways, this is how she was. And what happened that she herself fast forward five, 10 years and her daughters, when they grew older, they also ended up marrying, you know, guys like that. And not only just looks wise, they were actually, one of them was actually a criminal. Like they didn't even know that he was a criminal. Later when police got home and stuff like that, then they found out. So we should never ever comment on other people like that because there are narration like that too from Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. It is reported um, that if we mock at anyone's problem, we won't die before we go through similar situation. Remember that. I don't have the hadith in front of me, but that's the gist of it. If we mock at anyone's problem, if we laugh at anyone's problem, if we enjoy someone's suffering, we will go through that suffering before we pass away. Stop for it. Scary, right? So inshallah, remember this for life and don't ever laugh and mock at anyone's hard times, be it financial problems, be it health problems or any other problems. Never ever laugh at others because they are sins and they become trials for us. And the three modes of revelation are mentioned in the surah that how Rasulullah Sallallahu Alaihi used to get revelation. Sometimes Angel Jibreel would come down. Other times he would, um, you know, get a dream, right? And sometimes he would also get, he also went up, you know, up to the heavens and Allah Subhanahu Wa Ta'ala talked to him. And, you know, other things are also mentioned in the surah. So from Surah Ashura, we're going to cover ayah number 36 onwards. Okay, so let's see. So whatever thing you have been given, it is but for enjoyment of worldly life. So think about all the possessions you have. Think about all the things you enjoy in life. All of them are for a little while. But what is with Allah is better and more lasting for those who have believed and upon their Lord, they rely. So after this verse, I, I'm going to explain this. But after this verse, we're going to look at a checklist of the people who rely on Allah. And I want you to turn it into a checklist, inshallah. So let's see. So whatever you enjoy, be it your family, your house, your car, your computer, your phone, your gadgets, your drone, your cameras, whatever, your toys and your game consoles, your PS4, your Xbox, whatever it is. Whatever you enjoy, it is for a little while. It is for a little while. Why? Because dunya is temporary. It is going to melt one day. And whatever is with Allah, where? In the hereafter, is khair, is better. How? It is better in four ways. It is better in quantity. It's a lot. So you can have all the food you want, all the type of cuisines just for one meal in Jannah. Not hard for Allah to do that for you. Also in quality. Quality would be so amazing of any food you would like. So you can have like the Jannah version of your KFC halal one and you can have jannah version of your i don't know what you like mcdonald's right whatever you like the jannah version of that the quality would be of course out of this world and it will be better in availability like availability it is available all the time no matter which restaurant it is in this world especially if you're not talking about fast food and you're talking about fine cuisine fine cuisine is not available 24 7 isn't it and with this pandemic a lot of food is not available isn't it like the kind of way the, the kind of restaurants you used to like the kind of restaurants you wanted to go to now you don't have access to them 
So now you realize that not everything is available all the time. In Jannah, everything will, will be available all the time. And you won't even have to wait because even if you go to a very nice, expensive, fancy restaurant here in this dunya today, they take some time to prepare, prepare your food, isn't it? They won't bring it right away because they can't. They have to cook it and they have to bring it fresh. But in Jannah, you can get it fresh without any delay. That's so beautiful. And also in time span, it is going to be like forever and ever and ever, and you will never get bored of it, and you will never get tired of it, and you will never lose the taste for it. So that is better, which is in Jannah, not just food. Your houses will be in quantity a lot. And in quality, amazing. Like there's a hadith which talks about some homes will be like you can, will be like that, like glass like that. They will be like made of glass like that that you'll be able to see from outside once what's inside, and from inside you'll be able to see what's outside. You know, when we have big windows, we are like really happy. We can you know see our backyard from inside. It will be like all the walls are glass walls. Amazing, right? So it's like such a beautiful view. And then imagine like your own falls in your backyard. Then imagine your own fountains in your backyard. And every type of flower you can ever imagine in your backyard. Colorful, beautiful, you know, all like all you want, the way you want it. The more artistic you are, the more creative you are, the more creative you can turn your Jannah into, inshallah. And it will be abqa forever. It will be, it's not that, okay, time is over. Sorry, you're done with your 100 days in Jannah, now go out. No, it's not like that. It will be forever. Like when we go to a nice vacation stop in this world, a spot, nice vacation spot in this world, we have to come back. We cannot live there forever. We want to, but we can't afford to, right? It's not even possible. Our parents cannot pay for life for our vacation. It's not easy. It's very expensive. So we may go for a day, two days, sometimes a week, okay, maximum a month, right? That's pretty much it. But in Jannah, we will live there forever and ever. May Allah enable us to make it to Jannah with Fidaus. Say Amin. Amin. And who will enjoy all of this? Especially believers. There are many people in this world, but some will be chosen for Jannah. Why? Because Allah will look for Iman in our hearts. Okay, this person has got it. This person has got it. This person has got it. Okay, cool. They're going to get Jannah. But what about the rest? They did not even have something which was needed. It's just like having a ticket. If you don't have a ticket to some show, can you enter that hall? If you don't have a ticket or invitation for some party, can you go there? No. The better the party or the uh, amazing the party, the harder the rules, isn't it? the more expensive, the more celebrity-based the party, the harder it is to get in there. And if you have connections, then only you make it, isn't it, in dunya? So in akhirah, what is the connection? The connection is of iman. If you have faith, you're good. And these are the people, they rely upon Allah. They used to rely upon Allah in this world. They did not rely on their, themselves, their, their powers, their knowledge, their efforts, their money, rather they relied on Allah. They never said it was because of me, because of my hard work, because I did that. They were not arrogant. They were not self-centered. They were not, you can say, pleased with themselves because some people, they just love themselves so much that they can't even think of others. And they think that everything they're enjoying is because of them, because they're so good. That's a wrong attitude. Okay, now checklist items. Okay, write it down. So these are the people we, we are going to pull out their qualities from these ayats. Ayah number 37 onwards of Surah Ashura. Who are the, what is the category? The ones who trust Allah. The ones who trust Allah, what do they do? First thing. And those who avoid major sins. Anyone remembers the definition of major sins? We have talked about major sins, right? Did we talk about the definition as well? Let's see. Sister Minha Shia. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Minha. How are you? I'm good. How about you? 
Alhamdulillah. Good to hear your wife. Um, so um, major sins are sins that are really bad and Allah told us not to do in the Quran. Good. So they are called major sins either or there's a punishment, right? About punishment mentioned about them. Good. Very good. I think I haven't told you guys the definition. Seems like it. Let me just ask uh, Sister Maïs. Sister Maïs Bayari. Um, is it like shirk? Very good. That's one example. We didn't talk about definition though. Seems like it. Yeah, maybe I have told someone else. Okay, let me just tell you the definition today then. Write it down, everyone. So this way you will at least know which sin is a major sin. Okay, sorry, Sister Mice, you can mute yourself. Okay, good. So definition is, first of all, it is a sin which is called major sin in Hadith or Quran. Secondly, it's a sin which has punishment mentioned for it like stealing and like um, committing immoral acts right some type of immoral acts some punishment is mentioned for them right also killing someone there's a punishment for that sin as well so anything any evil deed which has a punishment it is it is considered major sin secondly if it is called major sin it is a major sin thirdly if it if allah's curse is mentioned that if a person does it Allah's curse is upon that person. So that is also a major sin. Okay. And fourth, if it is, if some type of punishment in afterlife is mentioned for that sin, that in akhirah this person is going to suffer. Why? Because of that sin. Can you remember all of this? Inshallah. Okay. So these are kabair. So a person who trusts in Allah stays away from all the haram things be it food, be it transactions, be it actions, or be it um, feelings. All haram stuff, he stays away from it. And also fawahish, dirty sins. So not only killing people, doing magic, but dirty sins. So dir like enjoying dirty jokes, saying dirty words, watching dirty stuff, reading dirty stuff. And you know what dirty is, right? And listening dirty stuff and doing dirty stuff. So let me tell you a story about this. So there was this father and he has two sons. These two sons, they wanted to watch some movie, all right? And mm -hmm. they told their father that, please allow us to watch that movie, please. Um, it's not all bad, it just has two bad scenes. It's really good movie, but it has two bad scenes. So allow us. So what happened? The father said, okay, you can go for movies tomorrow, but today you have to spend time with me, all right? Are you all with me? Paying attention? All right. So the father told them, okay, we can go watch that movie because it's all clean. It's just, it just has two bad scenes. Okay. But today you have to spend time with me in the kitchen. So they were together in the kitchen. So the father said, okay, how about we bake some cookies? So they baked some cookies together and then they were done with the batter. So they were about to like not done baking. So they were like, they put the batter together. They had eggs down. They had their flour in it, sugar and everything. And they had like um, some chocolate powder and some chocolate, chocolate chips in it, whatever, to make it nice and beautiful. And then father, he said, uh, he went to the washroom and he brought a bottle and it had urine in it. They were like, what are you doing, dad? Like, this is disgusting. Come on, grow up, dad. What are you doing? So dad said, wait up. You know, this batter is all good. I'm just going to put two spoons of urine in your cookie batter. That's it. It's all nice and clean, just two spoons. And then let's bake it. And would you eat it? Tell me, would you eat it? Tell me. Would any one of you eat such cookies? Never. Disgusting. Ew, right? Never. So this was the way of that fathers teaching their sons that two scenes are as bad as two spoons of urine in something nice. So if something is nice and clean, but it has some dirty stuff in it, don't watch it. If something is nice and clean, the whole novel, but it has some dirty content, don't read it. Don't watch it. Don't say it. Don't listen it. Don't forward it to people. Understood? Can you remember this for life, inshallah? Because inshallah, that will help you stay pure. Because, you know, Muslims, they are pure. That's why Allah picks them. You know, imagine this I really want all of you to always remember this picture. You are going to be 
a proper believer if you're pure. If your thoughts are pure, if your actions are pure, you can enjoy reading novels, no problem, as long as they're pure. You can watch content on TV as well, if it's pure. Inshallah, I have uh, searched for some more things for you guys. I'm gonna post them up. Did you guys notice that angels link on the portal? Yes or no? Did you notice that? Alhamdulillah. I'm, I'm going, to, going to inshallah give you more stuff so that you don't have to watch anything dirty. Happy? Smile? Okay, alhamdulillah. Let's move on. Third quality, so they stay away from major sins. They also stay away from dirty sins. And what do they do? They also, when they get angry, so what does it show? What does it show? They are human beings. They are not some angels. So they do get angry at times. But what do they do? When they get angry, like little kid of the little kid here, he says, I forgive you. So even if someone does zulm on him, says something very nasty or do whatever, he gets angry, but he doesn't react in that anger. Because if you're able to control anger, we are really powerful. Remember another quote, remember another gem, that if we don't control anger, anger controls us. If we don't control anger, anger controls us. And subhanAllah, you know, sometimes people in anger, they don't look themselves. Did you ever notice anyone angry? Looks like shaitan, right? Astaghfirullah, anyone. If that person's screaming and that person's face is red, and you know, sometimes even the, um, you know, that person is like, spits are coming out of that person's mouth, like screaming like crazy. So that person doesn't even look like a human because shaitan makes you angry, right? Shaitan makes the situation look worse, even though the situation wasn't that bad to begin with. So these people, when they get angry, they control, they control their anger and they say, I forgive you. It's okay. It's all right. I understand. I, forg I forgive you. I move on. Cool, right? Did you understand this point? So qualities are not done yet. So we're done with three. We have to do a few more. Quality number four. And those who have responded to their Lord. So how do they respond to their Lord? Let's just see. When they hear about Allah's commands, they respond right away. So when they hear that we should not deal with interest, they leave interest right away. When they learn about that gambling is wrong, they leave those games with gambling. Someone was asking the question about gambling games, right? I think it was on the course portal. So I'm gonna, uh, inshallah, try to, what my inshallah, inshallah, inshallah goal is for the next five days, I'm gonna take questions from the uh, course portal and I'm gonna try to answer them in class. How's that? Happy, right? Because so, th so that everyone can benefit because alhamdulillah, we have many listeners as well. So we don't want them to uh, feel neglected uh, because they are also our amazing brothers and amazing sisters with faith, alhamdulillah. Okay, so one of the questions was to do with um, games to do with money involved. So if you're going to pay money to play some game and in return, it's a game of chance, okay? In return, if it's a game of chance that you may win or you may lose your money, this is gambling. May Allah save us and protect us from that, right? So if you're gonna lose your money, it's gambling. Um, let me tell you another example and it may shock you. You know, in some malls, you would notice those um, small game areas for babies, literally, like they have like, you know, the claw like thingy and it has toys. You put like $2 in it and the claw is like um, an electric one. Ever seen that? Yes or no? So the claw goes and grabs a chocolate or a toy. And okay, tell me, does everyone get a toy? Does everyone who puts in $2 gets a toy? No. So is it a game of chance? Yes or no? Is it a game of chance? It is. You either lose your $2 all together, you get nothing out of it, or you get something which is worth $20. Both are not fair, right? If you just spend $2 and you get $20 in return, not fair. If you spend $2 and you get zero out of it, that's also not fair. So this is exactly, it's like the, you can say baby version of gambling to get babies or kids hooked. When kids are hooked, what will happen to them? When they grow older, they would love this. So avoid it. Don't ever play any games like that, inshallah. Just to be on the safer side. If you really want to buy something, you know, collect money and go buy that toy for $20. Doesn't matter. That will be halal toy, inshallah. So they listen to the command and they respond immediately. So when they know something is haram, they don't do it. 
when they heard about alcohol that if it's not okay to drink alcohol they stopped drinking it like sahaba did some day we can do their story as well and they established salah this is the fifth point how do they establish salah they make sure they're fully covered so let's just talk about conditions so when you have to pray you have to worry about few things first of all is your wudu complete okay it should be proper wudu it doesn't take more than 2 minutes to do proper wudu isn't it 2 minutes to do wudu and you get 10 good deeds for that just like that subhanallah and when you if you know the azkar after wudu like you know there are some duas and azkar if you know them by heart or even if you don't know them but you have an app you can pull it out and read them it's like massive rewards like if you say ashhadu allah ilaha wa uh, ashhadu la ilaha illallah wahdahu la sharika lah dhikr after your wudu then all the eight gates of jannah will open up for you on the day of judgment that enter from wherever you wish subhanallah it's that amazing so fulfill the conditions wudu should be complete make sure the spot you choose to pray on is pure nice like it should not be dirty it should be clean nice beautiful prayer mat or nice beautiful carpet or even floor no problem on um, you know there's no problem if you pray on the floor sometimes you should try that it will give you more humility it will make you more um inshallah focused in your salah but it should be clean all right and third your clothing should be proper for brothers their knees should be covered right for sure and then according to the majority of scholars and for sisters their face and their hands can be exposed the rest of the body should be covered including feet inshallah all right that's the uh, that's what the hadith says and allah knows best so inshallah fulfill the conditions and then pray so that your salah isn't rejected and you get full marks in it so fulfill the conditions fulfill the prerequisites and complete all the pillars of your salah like do proper uh, ruku do proper sujood and now comes the sixth point what is the sixth point whenever they have to decide a matter they consult with each other whenever they have to decide a matter they consult with each other what is consultation it doesn't have to be professional consultation remember that they don't have to hire someone for advice they can consult with a person who is related okay so let me explain what consultation is in point form so it's like group of people they reflect on different aspects of a situation they exchange their views and opinions and they come to a decision they come to a consensus that okay that's it this is our final answer okay let me give you an example i actually have a lot of examples for you guys so let's say your parents want to move neighborhood okay so who should they consult should they consult you yes or no tell me yes or no your parents they want to move neighborhood they want to go to different area and stay there should they consult you yes because you're going to live in that house you are going to live in that area so they should consult you it doesn't mean they should obey you Cons- consultation is that you sit together you do a meeting together and you think about the positives and you think about the negatives together and then you come to a conclusion and that conclusion of course would be just one answer it's not possible that half the people are saying no we want to stay in the old neighborhood and half the people are saying no we want to live on the new hip neighborhood you cannot split the family into two and live separately no not like that so consultation helps to come to one conclusion based on wisdom right so everyone gives their arguments it makes sense to me you no know, it doesn't make sense to me or oh, this 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 is good this is not good things like that okay i'm going to give you a few few more examples but let's see when should we consult people okay when should we consult others when we are trying to introduce a new policy we're not talking about company name policy at home let's say your father wants to implement a new policy that you will not go out alone with your friends on weekends okay because that's family time so that's a new policy so before implementing he should consult everyone he should consult your mother he should consult all of you sit together do a meeting and come to a conclusion and also uh, when to consult when you need ideas so let's say you are thinking of buying like your mom is thinking of buying a car 
So instead of her just going and getting a car, she should sit and talk to the whole family. What do you think? What kind of car I get? And of course, decision is, is not something that you have to force on your mom. Remember, always remember that. Consultation doesn't mean that we are the boss now and we will boss people around and will force them to listen to us. No, but consultation is something which makes our family bond stronger. That's what Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala wants for us, that we should be discussing matters and it makes us closer and it makes us realize that, okay, yeah, that's also possible. Then we realize that other people, they think differently because sometimes we just think in one way because you know we just have one brain. But when we listen to the arguments of other people, when we listen to their reasoning, when we listen to their opinions, then our brain opens up and we become more accommodating. Isn't it amazing? So try that from now on. This is something you need to teach your parents as well. That let's from now on, whatever we're going to do, we're going to consult each other. Everyone, because we're family. What's the point of family if we have to do everything on our own? If we have to make our own decisions, then what's the point of family? It's, there, there's no role of a family then, right? So for new ideas, we should Consult also to analyze the current situation. So let's say there's a current situation that your youngest sibling is, you know, not feeling well and everyone's worried, but they don't know what to do. So sit and discuss what could be the reason. Is he neglected or is he not taking enough food or what's the problem? Or is he scared of something? Like what, what is the matter? So analyze the current situation, sit together and discuss. Also for all important matters, for your university admission, for your school admission, Everyone should sit together and discuss and come to a conclusion. That seems like that you can go to a, maybe a private school or no, no, maybe we cannot afford it. How about we send it to, your pub, to a public school? Because many times it happens that parents, they decide and children, they don't even know why. And they become what? They become revengeful. They, they're like, everyone's going to private school and I'm suffering here in a public school. Happens or not? Did you ever feel like that? And why do we become angry like that? Because we don't know their reasoning. If they would have told us that they can't afford it, we would be okay. We are not evil people, right? Kids are not evil. Kids understand too. So we would understand if they can't afford, that's totally fine. If they don't, if they don't tell the world that they can't afford, but they don't, you know, they're not able to, so inshallah, no problem. We should be nice and accommodating because even in public school, you can do great. There are a lot of public school students. They are doctors, they're engineers, they're lawyers, they are leaders, they're CEOs of the companies. So there is no problem with the public school anyways. And any change in the system, you should consult each other. I'm gonna give you examples to do with you guys as well. So hold on. So how to consult? Sometimes you can, can have a meeting. Sometimes you can have survey. Like, you know, maybe write nice, um, make a nice form on paper. And you can have a survey for like, you know, from everyone. Let's say everyone's busy, or maybe you're, some of your siblings have moved out. Some live in, some live with their um, spouses, some live at university, dorm or whatnot. So you can send them the survey and they can fill out the survey and then you can decide. You can also have a suggestion box at home as well. And sometimes if someone's far away, like let's say your grandfather is far away, but you wanna consult him before you make a decision of like which major to take, which university to go to, which career path to choose, then you can give him a call and ask or give your grandma a call and ask. You can also email your cousins, your siblings. You can sometimes even have a poll, right? There is a feature of poll on different apps. So you can do that too. There are many ways to consult. Like if it's not easy for everyone to sit together, there are other ways as well, but we should consult. Okay, another example. So let's say, and I really want all of you to think about it. Then you would realize that how important shura is. So let's say your mom invites 10 people for dinner tomorrow, right? But she never asked, she didn't ask anyone, right? She didn't even ask your father, she didn't even ask you, and you have an exam, and your father has a meeting tomorrow. What will happen? Will it, will it be, um, you know, some, will, will it be fun? Yes or no? Would you enjoy that dinner? Yes or no? Not at all. Even though you like those guests, even though you like food, even though everything is good, but you will be pressed on time. You have assignment or exam to prepare. Your father is not even home. Who's going to bring groceries? Who's going to entertain these guests? Because he has a meeting. 
so it won't be fun so that's why consultation is important so if she wants to invite someone she can ask everyone or if you want to invite friends you know, sometimes it's not even our mothers it's, it's sometimes us we go to school and we get you know all excited about something and we tell our friends okay come over tonight and they all you know come over and your mom is like oh my god i'm so tired today for all week long i was working and working and working doing all the chores and i thought i'm going to have some rest tonight and here we go you with your friends so would you have you know would she have any um hard feelings for you more likely yes she would think that you don't care and she would feel really really sad and you will become a reason for that so don't get over excited always consult before you do something and if you consult your mom would do better she would even plan ahead and maybe you can do something on the weekend for your friends yes or no good right another example could be that so your father wants your home renovated all right but he doesn't even ask you and he just gets calls the workers and he starts renovating all the workers are there and it's like a lot of noise and right on your head and you cannot even study and your professional exams are coming up or let's say you're not feeling well these days you have fever and you have headaches and you were not telling anyone because you didn't want to bother them but now you're like suffering like anything so it happens when we don't consult okay let's say you want to take part in something at school and you don't even know it's not allowed and you don't even know it's not halal and you don't even consult anyone and you invite your family and your cousins and your um grandparents to a show and you are performing there doing something which is so haram doing something which is not allowed in islam and then what will happen they will not like the show they won't even like you they they may even scold you so why did that why did that happen because we did not consult with them if you would have asked them i'm thinking of performing for this show and this is what i'm going to do then your parents can remind you and tell you that no kiddo this is not what is allowed in islam how about you do something else you do something which is brainy you can go um you know and perf- uh, like you can do and show your performance in some type of um spelling bee you can be part of something which is productive and which uses brain not just your body and let's say you're a boy and you wanted to, you wanted to get into boxing and you just did not ask anyone and you just signed up at school for that uh th- that class or that session and then you got hurt really bad now you're coming back home with a broken jawbone and teeth coming out of your mouth what will happen your parents of course are going to care about you but will you, will they scold you will they scold you yes even though you're hurt you will still get scolded because it's your fault you didn't you never consulted them so always consult first of all who should we consult first of all allah how can we consult allah first we need to check whatever we are about to do is it allowed or not so that is how we consult allah also there is another way to consult allah and that is by praying istikhara you know what istikhara is it's just two write it down it's just two units of prayer and then uh, two units of prayer and after that It, there's a dua it's a bit longer one it's called dua of istikhara inshallah i'm going to upload it on the portal inshallah let me write it down so i don't forget just make that know the translation so you know what you're saying what you're asking allah for and then that's it then jump in okay so then you can do the stuff you don't have to wait for a dream you don't have to sleep after that you don't have to wait for a color you don't have to wait for some angel to come and tell you what to do not at all it's just a dua all right so you pray to rakat that's the difference and then you make the dua and the translation of that dua is oh allah if it's good for me make it happen if it's not good for me take it away from me understood okay sister rihana hang in there we're going to take your question at the end and then uh, who should you consult the people who are directly related right anything to do with your family is direct, re- directly related to your family so let's say you want to change the orientation of your room and you share a room share your room with your sibling so your sibling is at school sibling comes back you have ruined everything for your sibling because you have moved the bed aside you have moved uh, your sibling's study table outside the room and stuff like that so this is not smart so if you want to do something and some people are directly related please ask them please consult with them first 
no not just ask say okay let's do a meeting and i'm going to i'm going to tell you these are my points why i want the rooms orientation all changed why i want things move, moved around because i think this is better and this is window is there and you know we'll have more light what not so give your reasoning and other person will understand or maybe the other person will give you the reasoning and that reasoning would be even better than yours so take what is better for everyone and also consult only smart and intelligent people not the dumb people and expert in the field especially let, let's say you want to go in university right so you are choosing your career path don't ask your two two year old brother ask someone who knows who's expert in the field that okay what should i do who who you know which kind which kind of major should i take you can also analyze your family and see okay who is successful like Uh, is my cousin successful is my aunt successful is my grandma successful okay let me ask what did she do and she may be able to help me decide my field understood yes or no and then sincere and serious people you know some people they just make fun of everything or they just laugh everything off don't talk to them don't consult with them because they won't give you proper advice who should be not consult the people who are not related to the matter the people who are far from deen don't consult them because they're going to give you some some type of advice which is going to be harmful for your afterlife and don't ask self-centered people you know some people they're always thinking about themselves don't ask them they're not going to give you good advice some benefits of consultation first of all there's baraka baraka means you will find increase in it there will be some type of happiness goodness coming out from it also task will become easy if you consult everyone everyone will help you they will even give you ideas they will even try to accommodate things for you and then they will give you suggestions and your work will become efficient and you will have more unity that's the benefit of consultation alhamdulillah all right so let's move on next quality is wa mimma razaqnahum yunfiqun and they spend from what allah has given them so these are the odd nights make sure you spend on people spend on poor people spend on sick people spend on orphans spend on family spend on friends spend on everyone inshallah like uh, you can pick one category every day and you can help them inshallah next surah surah to zukhruf in surah zukhruf we learn about if we turn away from the remembrance of allah allah appoints a shaitan on us and that shaitan that devil makes us dumb and then we do we get blind and we do everything not literally blind we get blinded and then we do everything haram and wrong and based on our desires and we also learn what is the solution solution to stay away from this appointed shaitan who would be like like literally stuck on you so we don't want that stuck on us shaitan we want quran so that shaitan is off us a'udhu billahi minash shaitani rajeem from surah zukhruf we are going to look at few ayat we have only 1 minute so let me just give you one ayah which is very important we can do rest inshallah tomorrow don't worry okay so there is a beautiful ayah in this surah which tells us about rights okay so surah to zukhruf has an ayah to do with rights let's look at the reference number first so this is the ayah sorry um reference is not here yeah ayah number 13 and ayah number 14 of surah zukhruf So in this ayah we learn that you may settle yourselves upon the backs of the rides upon the back of like the um up, upon the back of your rides like be it a car be it a plane be it a ship be it your horse or camel then you remember the favor of your lord that allah made you settle on it and then you should say a dua what is the what is the dua سبحان الذي سخر لنا هذا هذا وما كنا له مقرنين وانا الى ربنا لمنقلبون got it so you all know this dua right so this is dua is not from anywhere else but from the quran this is also mentioned in hadith as well but this is directly coming from the quran so whenever you sit on your ride or stand on your ride or get on your ride it can be your uh, roller blades as well it can be your skateboard as well anything you consider a ride okay whenever you get on your ride then what do you do then remember allah and remember this this is a blessing this is a ni'mah of allah he gave you this amazing transportation 
So this transportation is also Allah's blessing. And then you remember Allah by saying, Subhanallah, Subhanallah. What does it mean by that? Glory be to Allah that he made me control my car. It's not that my car is controlling me, I am controlling my car. And Subhanallah, you must have heard about the recent incident. You know, sometimes we're very, when we're very happy about all the technology and that, you know, we are just relaxed and the car drives itself and car locks itself and car does everything itself. So what happened to the recent Tesla situation? Remember there was this brother, Muslim brother, who was driving the car and he got into an accident, but because this car was all or fully automated, the car's doors, they did not open. He wanted to come out. He could not come out because everything was automated and he got burnt within the car. Astaghfirullah, may Allah forgive him and may Allah elevate his ranks in Jannatul Firdaus. But you know, it's a blessing that when we are able to control, when robots are going to control us, we may get into trouble. So we don't want to do that. So when we sit on a car, we say, glory be to you, O Allah, that we control this car. You made us control this car. And it's not that car is controlling us or it's not that you know we you know it, it is Allah's mercy that we don't get into accidents remember that okay and we remind ourselves every side every time we sit in the car or in on our ride on our bicycle as well or a scooty or whatever that indeed to our Allah we will return to our Lord we will return so what is, what is it it's a reminder that yes, I'm getting on my car and yes, anything can happen and I can turn back to Allah. So this is a way to affirm our faith. This is a way to revive our faith that I am a believer. Even on my car, I'm a believer. I'm still a Muslim. I will return to Allah no matter when. Today, tomorrow, 10 years after, 20 years after, but I will eventually go back to Allah. And it is Allah's mercy that I can control my car. SubhanAllah, right? So inshallah, we're going to conclude here because we have a lot of other ayahs to cover, but inshallah, next time. Jazakumullah khairan kasir. I'm going to take um, five students and they're, um, inshallah, what did they learn from this class, inshallah? And we will do more tomorrow. So if you want to leave, you can leave. Subhanakallahumma wa bihamdika ashadu Allah ilaha illa anta astaghfiruka wa atubu ilayka. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. But inshallah, I'm going to take brother Ahmad Khurram. What did you learn today? So what I learned is that so I learned that like when we get out of our situation according to our suits that we did before when we get out of a situation we should thank Allah and remind yourself that this was all Allah. Very very good. Allah. And also I also learned that um, our looks doesn't matter because according to that story you told us, our looks doesn't matter because only, only our deen matters because our looks, maybe you, maybe in this world you don't have a good look, but who knows in the akhirah you can have a good look. Exactly. Beautiful. Exactly. And our looks, they don't have, we don't have control over them anyways, right? So we can't really do anything about it, but we can do something about our actions easily. So that's what counts. Beautiful. Allahumma barik, brother Ahmad, you're amazing. Okay, brother Zayn Tashfin. Um, assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Um, so I learned that before doing anything, you should always like consult your parents or like a grown up or like anyone before doing anything, because it might like be haram and you might not be supposed to do it, and yeah, and it could harm yes. someone. Exactly. Very good. Very, very good. Barakallahu. And that's a very good lesson. Uh, Brother Umar Rizvi. Assalamu alaikum. All right. Assalamu alaikum, Umar. I learned that uh, we should not indulge in anything, even if it's all nice, and even if it just has a little bit of stuff that is not right for us, stuff that is not good. Very not exactly. indulge that. Yeah, if something has something little wrong, just stay away from it yeah. and look for something which is all pure and nice. Beautiful. Allahumma barik. Well done, Brother Umar. Okay, Hadi Um, I learned that um, in the hereafter, that everything is better quantity, quality, availability, 
and time spans, right. and that we'll have we'll have Jannah forever. And especially uh-huh. the believers, they will have like they will have strong iman, and they will be like the true believers. Beautiful, Allahumma bar. Very good. Safa and Soha Mansuri. Assalamualaikum. Waalaikum assalam. Can you be a little more louder, please? Come closer to the computer. Okay. Um, I learned that um, whenever you get something, you should be proud of it, but you have to also thank Allah. Very good. Exactly. Uh, you should not get arrogant. You just remember that Allah gave it to me. You can enjoy it. Alhamdulillah. Very good. Uh, okay, I'm going to take a few more because oh, everyone is raising hand now. So, Sister Hawa? Sister Hawa? Sister Hawa? You want to share something? Maybe you're not there. Sister Dua Istikhar? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Alhamdulillah, I learned a lot of stuff. I learned uh, a lot about consultation, like who to consult, consult to, when, and why, and how. And it has a lot of benefits for us, and it can really help us in our decision. Inshallah. Very good. And then, you know, it's very easy for us to slip, but when we consult, then everyone gives us their ideas, their experience, they share their experiences, and it becomes easy for us to decide something nice for ourselves. And we save ourselves from um, embarrassing situations in life. Mehreen Sayyida? Yes, um, I learned a lot today. I learned a lot today. The one thing I learned that you, you should never mock someone because the same, the same problem comes knocking on your door. Exactly. Beautiful. Allahumma bari. Well done. Mariam uh, Kauser Iman. Assalamualaikum. Why? Mariam. Mariam. Um, I learned today that. Oh, I'm sorry. Just one thing. Whenever Allah gives us something, we should be grateful because you can also take it away from us. Exactly. Very good. When we are grateful, then we are able to preserve the blessings. Beautiful. Allahumma barik. Fatima Tawqeed. Um, I learned that like we should um, keep on doing good deeds. And also, like I, I didn't know that the, um, the machines that you put two dollars were also gambling. I used to just think they were just fun. You learned a good lesson, cutie. Okay, Adan Zafar. I learned, I learned what major sins are. And good. I learned that if, if we don't control anger, anger controls us. Beautiful. Uh, Dua Safa? Dua Safa? You're not there? Maybe your mic isn't working. Amjad Khan? Amjad Khan? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Um, I learned that we shouldn't be arrogant. And um, when we have something good and we see someone, someone have something bad, we shouldn't make fun of them because we could get the same thing. Exactly. Very good. How about it? Fakia and Azka Tare. I learned today if we get blessing blessing, it's it's not a reward, it's a test. Exactly. Because reward would be in Jannah, inshallah. Very smart girl. Maryam Altaf. Maryam Altaf. Okay, Brother Hamza Hussain. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullah. Today I learned that you should always take the consultation of Allah or your parents, and uh, you should always like if you don't take the consultation, something wrong can also happen. And I also understood that you should always remember Allah even when you're going on rides. 
Exactly, because things are in our control just because Allah gave us the control. If he takes away, what can we do? You know, sometimes brakes also, you know, we're not able to put a brake on when we're driving. So this is also from Allah. So Alhamdulillah, that Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala protects us. Um Khadija? Um Khadija, are you there? No, I think. Abdullah Ahsan? Um, I learned that um, istikhara is like two units of prayer followed by the dua of istikhara. <laughs> Amazing, mashallah. Do you have to wait for a dream? Where did um, you go? No. Very good, perfect. That's like a smart kid. Now you can mute yourself. Barakallahu feekum. Okay, I'm going to take hands again. Okay, wait. Because some of you, I think you forgot that you were supposed to share. Because Zainab Mukassar. Zainab? Um, I learned um, that we should consult. L louder. Can you close? come closer? Louder. I learned that um, we should consult when there's any new policy, there are any new ideas. Very good, very good. Um, yes, yeah, so you got the idea. Are you going to consult your parents next time? No. You're not going to consult them before you do anything? You're not going to do a meeting with them when you're about to make a decision? Yes, I will. I cannot hear you. Sakina Uzair? Sakina? Assalamu alaikum. I learned that you should first consult Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala and right. then like the people directly related. Perfect. The smart and intelligent people. Very good. Know. Hello, Mubarak. Well done. You can mute yourself and we will move on. Sister Maryam Bakai. So I learned that I actually didn't know this, but all the surahs in just 25 are were actually revealed in Mecca. I just had memorized them and I wasn't I didn't know anything about them but today, alhamdulillah. Oh mashallah, you haven't memorized. That's beautiful. And I also learned that I should avoid major sins. Very good, Allah Mubarak. Your voice was low too. I don't know why. Sadia Imran. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam. Um, I learned that I should, who I should um, consult and manage your sins. Mm -hmm. And I also learned about the benefit of. Um, okay, Allah Mubarak, I could not hear you properly. I think there's something wrong with my side. Um, I learned uh, who I should consult, who I should consult, my major sins. Good, good, good. Very good. Yeah, now I could hear you. Sister Hawa? Mm -hmm. um, I have a question too. Okay. Okay, go ahead, Sister Hawa. Okay. My question is, can you read Quran silently? No, no, no. You, sh you have to move your tongue. Okay. Inshallah. And Allah knows best. Because that's recitation. Recitation is not just looking at the page and that's not recitation. Okay. What I learned is um, you should consult with your family before you do something or um, take um, a decision. Very good. Very good. Mashallah. Well done. Alhamdulillah. Now we have Sister Ramla Ullah. Ramla Ullah, where'd you go? Okay, you're not there now. Sister Sara Sayyid. Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum as -salam. First of all, I like your classes. Barakallahu Kiki, thank you. I, I liked it so much. And if I had even a question. Okay. So, uh, um, I have so many questions, but I don't remember all of them. And uh, in the question section, uh, question section when i uh, want to write my questions can i remember them so i can't 
Oh, yeah. it doesn't let you write. You can yeah. type them here privately for me. Okay, I'm going to open it. You can privately type them for me. I'm going to copy them and I'm going to try to respond them in the class. It's okay? Uh, actually, I don't know till now the question. It's okay. Just type one of them, all right? I cannot hear you clearly anyways. For some reason, I don't know. I think I should just close the room. The room is not happy with us anymore, I guess. Okay. Um, Sister Maria Mali, what did you learn? Well, um, I had a question, and what I learned was that um, um, you should be grateful for everything that you have, because um, then if you're not, then then those blessings can be taken away from you, mm -hmm. and um, you should remember a lot any sing any time, I mean every time, and um, um, my question was that um, yesterday um, you said that you were um, putting a something they're called like email something from the grave or something like that oh yeah, yeah i still have to find that video yes exactly inshallah i will do that okay. Okay. don't worry sorry inshallah eventually everything will be there inshallah, inshallah. Uh, zara and alicia she picked me assalamualaikum alaikum <laughs> um uh, i um i learned that when you're in hardship and allah subhanahu wa ta'ala gives you his mercy and and you get ease you shouldn't be arrogant and you should keep saying alhamdulillah and being grateful to allah very very good thank you welcome sister rihana mahmoud rihana i i learned today that that we sh that there are some people that are arrogant and they don't and, and they and when they are in trouble they go to allah but then when they are they have that when they get better, then they say it's because of me. And then there's some other people who forget Allah and turn away from Him. And then they call on Him when they're in trouble. And then mm -hmm. when He like, gives them power again, they forget Him. Exactly. So we should not become like that. Right? I also had a question. Okay. Uh, do you can you recommend any research books? I mean, I'm reading translation, but like any tafsir books or anything? A uh, tafsir book or um, Islamic history book or sira book? Yes, uh, something like that. The Lost Islamic History is such a good book by Firas Al Khatib. Write it down. Lost Islamic History is such a good book. Also, for a tafsir, you can get um, Sheikh Saadi's tafsir. It has three volumes. It's very very good. It's in English as well now, finally. Like after so many years now, it has been translated into English. So get that in shell. Um, Brother Safwan. Um, I learned that um, we, should, um, we shouldn't be angry and we should try and keep our um, anger low and we should try and be calm. Very good, Brother Safwan. Uh, Sister Amina Smith, everyone who's typing, to be picked, inshallah, I'm taking everyone in order, right? So I'm not missing anyone. So just hang in there. Sabr. Sabr is the key, remember? Okay. Inshallah. I learned that if there's a little bit of bad in something, you shouldn't take it from the example with the cookie butter and the urine. Exactly. Good. You remembered. That's beautiful. Amazing. Sister Om Khadija, I've taken you already, right? Sister Afia Siddiqui, it's your turn. Uh, I learned that um, you should um, I learned that you should always be thankful to Allah when you get something. Very good, very good. You're right, alhamdulillah. And Sister Zara and Sister Alicia are asking about the classes about Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam. Yes, they, they have, we have them. Go to alhudaonline.org, search for youth courses and you will find this course. It's called, um, you know, you will have to search for Prophet Sallallahu Alaihi Wasallam's name and you will find it. Okay, inshallah. And there's a link on your portal as well. You can get it from there. And anyone who's typing weird stuff, we're going to remove you. All right? So stop. Okay. Now let's see. Uh, we have, wait a second. 
Rukhsana Nazir. Rukhsana Nazir going once, going twice. Hello? Yes, go ahead. I have a question that was to your call. When I go to the question and answer session and go to Alhuda Super Admin and hit message, it says you haven't replied to anything and it says the contact request, like it's still waiting for you to accept it. Yeah, you don't have to add me. You just have to post a question there because I can't add all of you, right? So I will, inshallah, like when you just click on got your questions, just there's a reply at the bottom. Just click on reply and you'll be able to send a um, question. All right. I'm going to show it to you tomorrow how to do it. How's that? Okay. Jazakallah. Okay. Wait. Barakallah. Arifa Dawood. So um, w when I went on my um, when I went on my quest por portal, you said that you had um, pu uh, put the link, but I didn't find the link. Uh, for the uh, email from the grave bar? Yeah. Inshallah, I'm going to post it up. I have to look for it, inshallah. Okay. Barakallah. The uh, rest of the stuff is there, right? The nasheed you wanted, that's there. Brother Muhammad, are you there? The one who wanted the nasheed? Your nasheed is up there, alhamdulillah. The takbirat are up there now. Someone wanted them. So alhamdulillah, they're there. Um, okay. Brother Abdul, Hanna, Brother Abdul Hanan Anisa. And Abdurrahman, I guess. Are you there? Yeah. Going once, going twice. If I can't hear you, I'll have to move to another student. I'm right here. Okay, louder, louder. Um, I have a. I know it's not relevant to the um program, but um, I actually have been wondering this question a lot. Can she? Do she as in Sunnis? Um, do they do they perform Hajj and Umrah the same? Hopefully, all Muslims would perform Hajj and Umrah the same ways. I'm not quite sure. So, you know, the easiest way is um, whenever we do anything, we should just check, like, where is this coming from? Like, uh, why am I praying like this? Did Rasulullah pray like this? Just check a hadith. Similarly, whatever we do, if we check, then inshallah, we will stay on the track. Inshallah. I have a question. I'll take you more of a comment. Well, mm I, what I learned today was that I never knew those, those flawed games were haram. I never ever knew that. Mm, I thought, yeah. I, 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 I think they're rigged anyway. They're pretty much rigged so that you can't win at all. Uh, yeah, and, we, yeah, we should make dua, right? May, may Allah save us from anything which is wrong and haram. Yeah, and okay. my, my comment is, is when, when, you, when, you had that, when you had that slide that said, I, I forgive you with that little kid and the big person. Um, it reminds me of the of this of this quote that my dad says all the time whenever whenever we me and my siblings get upset with each other. He said we should always forgive each other and forget. We should always forgive and forget. Very good. Allah Other you have a question? Mm-hmm. No, he doesn't have a question. Okay, we're good now. Alhamdulillah. Allah Mubarak, everyone. Shazia. I have um, learned that I got something that I have learned. I have learned that you should never do gambling or do the kids' toys games that has the metal thing. Yeah, that has the money involved. Anything which is yeah. not money related and you're not getting any money thing in return, then it's inshallah. Okay. 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 Allah Mubarak. Well done, girl. Uh, Nabiha Sayyida. Yeah. Yeah. Um, I learned that um, if you do a do, um, you'll get 10 good deeds. Mm -hmm. And um, and can, um, and I learned if, if you uh, if you have a good if you have a good time, uh, you you had to still do it in both times. So Very can my and can my can my sister talk? Yes. When we are watching Haram, we're doing a dirty thing. 
Oh, yes. So we should not. Very good. MashaAllah. You learned it. Allah Mabarak. May Allah protect us. Shifa? Assalamu alaikum. Wa alaikum assalam, Shifa. Um, I learned that um, whatever gadgets you have in this world, it's not forever. And in Jannah, it will be better in quality, quantity, in time span and availability. And you can live there forever. Exactly. That's the best part. Exactly. No way. Hamza Iftikhar. Yes, Assalamu Alaikum. Wa Alaikum Assalam. I learned we should uh, do co uh, concentration uh, when we make a plan. Very, very good. Well done. So you're going to do that next time? Are you yes. going to implement it in your life? Very good. Yes, um, I, yes I will try. Very good. Allah my life. Nusrat Bega? Um, Assalamu Alaikum. Um, we had a question. Okay. Um, we were wondering if there's like, um, so, say there's like a raffle at your school and all the money goes to charity, then are you allowed to participate? Uh, how does it work? Like, what is so it? It's like, um, mm -hmm. there's like tickets, and okay. if you you pay money to buy a ticket, and if you um, have a ticket with a certain number on it, then you win a prize. But sometimes you don't get the ticket with the number that has the prize on. Oh, so it's like more like lotto? Yeah, yeah, it's a bit like a lottery. Like lottery, then it's not allowed. But if the money all goes to the to a charity, then... Even then, anything which is lottery, right? Because you're winning anyways, right? You You will get something out of it. You know what I mean? Yeah. Yeah, so it's that even though it's going in charity, we should do charity without all of these, you know, gifts in return, inshallah. Okay, thank and you. You're more than welcome. Um, Saira? Um, I've learned that um, if Allah gave you something, you should thank him. And um, um, I have a question. Mm -hmm. um, is Shaitan a Muslim? No. <laughs> okay. Good question, though. Allah uh, Mubarak. Nimra Khan. Uh, Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum assalam wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I learned that we should never judge anyone for like. So let's say if someone is born and they're like finger looks weird and you're like ah oh haha like your finger looks weird or like that might you might kind of get karma in the future like something might bad might happen to your finger so we should never judge anyone for features that like are weird about them that you might think are like bad about them exactly so we may also go, go through that yeah we should not call it karma though because karma is not an islamic concept um, yeah. But yeah, you know, what goes around comes around sort of thing. Yes, it is right. It's true. Alhamdulillah. Barakallah. Sister Amin Amir. I learned that so that man never gets tired of asking for a card and that they will not like go to Jannah. I don't know. Not everyone. Some people. Yeah, but some people. Yes. But the like, ones who... I also have a question. Okay. Um, what if that person is a little bit bad and a little bit good? Yeah, so remember, did you take that class when we talked about some people uh, who have equal good deeds and equal bad deeds? Same weight. Uh, so they will have to wait. So that's how I we don't should think try to so. You were not in class? Okay, maybe you can listen to the recording. But, you know, what should we do is we should. Like if we do something wrong accidentally, we should try to make it up with some good deed right away so that our good deed side is heavier all the time. Okay? Okay. And it's possible, inshallah. You can do it easily. Okay. Hamza uh, Mubarak. Okay. Mudassar. Mudassar. 
You're not there. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Wa alaikum assalamu wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuhu. Go ahead. Uh, I learned that if man loses hope in uh, Allah, then Allah shall get angry at him. Exactly. So we should not. Very good. Anything else? Uh, no. Okay, one more about it. Uh, okay, we have Sister Anam Qadir. Sister Anam, I think I've lost your questions. I'm going to take you on mic. Sister Anam Qadir. Assalamu alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. Wa alaikum wa rahmatullahi wa barakatuh. I had the doubt that is wearing niqab mandatory. Yes, I've responded to you. There, there's a difference of opinion on it. Some scholars say it is mandatory. Others say it is mandatory only if there is fitna. If there's, uh, you know, if you can get into some type of problem and niqab can save you, then inshallah you can do it. Uh, both opinions are valid. So inshallah you can see where you stand, where you live, what kind of your, what kind of situation you're in. You can consult with the people around you because they know your situation better, right? And then come to a conclusion. Make sense? And Allah knows best. Um, okay, I think we're done with everyone. One round, everyone's done, right? Harim, I did not take Harim. Harim, are you there? Assalamu alaikum. Sister Mariam, I had a question that, um, like, you know, when there is, a, like, in Telegram, there is bull's eye, uh, you know, uh, animated thing that we use, uh, that people use for quizzes. Is it allowed or is it gambling? Mm, how does it work? I don't, I, I've never so used it. Okay, an animated dart that you send uh, to decide whether, like, you know, who, like, you know, when there's a tie, so it's like a tiebreaker. Like, you know, when same, like two, three people like, got same like score. Drawing lots. Right? Like drawing lots. Right? You put the names on papers and then you say who wins, right? That one? It's like a dart and, the, you know, people uh, click it and then the, like, you know, uh, target, it hits the target in the okay. middle. Then the person wins. So, but you don't get no money. The you get money. So the quiz is like based like, you know, whoever um, like, you know, wins, they get the prize of the quiz. Okay. And it has some value. It, it is money based. Yes. yes. Um, and do you pay to play that? No, it's like okay. a it's break fine. a tie on Telegram. Yeah, then yes. it's fine. Because when you pay to play, then it's gambling. When it's okay. just a gift, then it's not gambling. And Allah knows best. Laiba <laughs> Sabi? Laiba Sabi? Laiba Sabi going thrice. And that's it. Laiba, are you there? Okay, Zara and Alicia, we're done, right? Ifra Zafar. Ifra um, Zafar. Assalamu alaikum. Um, I have the question. I like yeah. to draw a lot. And so, well, sometimes I draw people and animals. Is that okay or is it haram? Don't put, uh, make the eyes. You know, like, we have slide on, on our slides, we have people as well, right? Weird type of people. So yeah. like if you don't draw eyes or you don't draw their nose, then it's inshallah, okay. Similarly so, for animals, like don't make them real, real looking, okay? So like no face features? Yeah, or... better avoid them to be on the safer side, inshallah. Okay. Okay, Thank can you. you do that? Yeah. Okay, that'd be, like, that'd be like such a good sacrifice and you will get tons of rewards, inshallah. Allah Okay. All right, I think we're done. Um, I can't take around two sisters and brothers. I know you guys are amazing, but inshallah, just hang in there. I'm going to look at the questions and I'm going to come back uh, to you tomorrow with at least a few more answers, okay? Jazakumullah khairan kasira for your... Um, okay, now we have questions down here. If flipping, flipping coins haram, no, inshallah, because we're not putting money there, right? What about tokens? If you play a game and you have to pay, um, depends if you're getting money back and you're paying money and if it's a game of chance, then yes. And Allah knows best. Okay. And Sister Mariam is saying uh, two Surah Toba. No, no, no. Sister Mariam is asking is in Salat Toba, do you have to uh, reset Surah Toba? No, you don't have to. It's just two Rakat. Just two Nawafil. Good question. I think you guys are faster in writing. I should take the written questions. Now, uh, very good. Sister, Sister Mary was asking that, you know, uh, is wearing uh, hijab mandatory, especially when people mock? 
you know, people will mock no matter what, right? People are like, pe people are people. So we don't listen to people. Remember, there is no obedience in Allah's disobedience. So inshallah, when we are firm and when we do things right, um, no one can harm us, inshallah. Allah's help will be with us. So may Allah's help with you, be with you, all of you, inshallah. Okay, I think that's pretty much it. As Brother Hamza Hussain is asking, do you have to have wudu to touch the Quran? It's better to have wudu, inshallah. That's a, that's, a, that's a stronger opinion, but there are other set of scholars they say it's okay. Um, you know, you can recite without wudu as well. But Alhamdulillah, with the help of gadgets, when you use a gadget, then you can easily, you know, open the Musaf uh, on the phone as an app and pray, uh, recite Quran, right? So it's Alhamdulillah very, very easy these days. Alhamdulillah for the technology. We should be very grateful. Atiya Ahmed, are you still there? Okay, Sister Atiya? Yes. Go ahead. Um, my name is Atiya Dries. What's your name? Uh, Idris. Oh, Idris. Okay, go ahead, Idris. Do you have a do you have a comment, a question, or lesson? Um, a comment. Go ahead. Um, when we go to Jannah, we're gonna get like like better things in Earth. Exactly. Inshallah. May Allah take us all to Jannah. Very good. Anything else? No. Allahumma barik. Well done. Okay, uh, someone is asking, um, Sister Shifa is asking, if we are reading Quran in the time of sunrise and we get a sajda, can we do sajda? Yes, inshallah. According to scholars, uh, you can do sajda. Because that's not a salah sajda, right? Uh, someone is, uh, Sister Laiba, uh, you are sort of right. Yes. It's better to avoid them, inshallah. So if you really want to play board games, you can play Scrabble. You know, we have to um, play something which is good for our brain as well. So even our games should be very productive. And if we do that, if we obey Allah in this regard, we will become an intelligent, intellectual nation. When we don't obey him, we become dumb and useless nation. So Brother Safan is saying, if your school forces you to draw, then get a um, letter written from your parents or someone, or maybe some masjid, some imam, and show it to your school that, sorry, um, my son or this kid, this Muslim kid is not going to draw that. There are limitations and they won't mind. Okay? Uh, Sister Zara and Alisha are asking, do we have to wear hijab when we recite Quran? No, you don't have to, and Allah knows best. Sister Zainab, uh, no, you don't have to do fresh wudu if you already have a wudu. Alhamdulillah. Sister, um, wait a second. Sister Shifa, no, it's better not to play that. It's, it, it has no, it's like we don't use any aqal in it anyways. Brother Safan, it's better not to. It's better not to. I just came across another ruling. I used to play them as well, but you know, I've just came across that we should not so, you know, better safe than sorry. There are other options. There are many other amazing options. Uh, Sister Zainab Ali, um, you still have to pay the full price because you know you will get recordings and everything, all the resources for the previous months as well, inshallah. But you know, it's like, it's totally worth it. If it's hard for you, email us. We're going to arrange someone else um, to sponsor you as well. Don't worry. Just if you're ready, let us know. Uh, Sister Harim, that is the answer, right? It's um, dice games, according to a lot of scholars, it's better not to play them. Yes, Sister Laiba, we can. Alhamdulillah. Brother Hamza Hussain is asking about minor sins. Minor sins would be anything which is not major, <laughs> to be exact. So let's say maybe accidentally shaking hands with a non mahram girl or lady for a guy would be a minor sin and then just ask Allah for forgiveness. Yes, Pictionary is very good, Sister Zainab. Pictionary is very good. But make sure you don't draw it fully, right? Thank you, Sister Shiva. May Allah reward you as well. Depends on the card, Sister Saya. Depends on them. So Brother Hamza, Jins, inshallah. We're going to talk about Jins in just 29. Get ready for Jins in just 29, inshallah, everyone. Okay, Barakallahu Fikum. Can we just stop? I know you love to talk. Me too. 
What happens to Rihanna? Why are you sad? Don't be sad, just smile, it's okay. Um, it's better to not attend anything which is based on shirk, Sister Laiva. Anything which is based on shirk, we should avoid it. Even those parties, yes. Sister Amina Smith, um, whenever you're ready, you can wear your hijab, but ask your parents. Like, I think for girls, it's like, if you're 12 plus, then you can consider. If you're younger than that, it's all right. Mariam Ali, can you please retype question? Oh, Sister, no Sister Roxana Nazir, yes, yeah, sorry. Um, that is closed now. So email us, inshallah, email your project now. You can draw stick people, of course, inshallah. No, Brother Mahmood, very good question. For sajda ayah, if you're reciting on the table, can we do sajda on the table? No, sajda has to be on the ground, inshallah. Um, Sister Mariam, I don't know how we play Ukrainian, so I don't know. Uh, Sister Ruksana Nazir, send it to um, Sister Shalya's, like Al Huda short courses at shc at gmail.com, inshallah. And you can write, no, 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 not the super admin one. Please don't email me. <laughs> Just email there. I'm going to get him from there, inshallah. <laughs> okay, inshallah, I'm going to type it. Um, emojis, they don't have realized brother Maz, right? They have dots. Dots are still okay. And Allah knows, but it should not be like proper eyeball. Now, Sister Harim, inshallah, like you can show them the videos, inshallah. Shouldn't be a problem. Wait a second, Sister Saira, can you retype? We are friends. We are all Allah subhanahu wa ta'ala's creation. We are all our friends. Okay, I'm typing um, the email address. Here we go. Yeah, Sister Harim, uh, we haven't uploaded the slides for anyone, right? So if you have taken screenshots, then inshallah you can use them to teach them. Uh, Sister Zainab, no, 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 it's not a sin. Sister Zainab Junaid Khan is asking, is it a sin to sit and pray? No, it's not a sin, but for a prayer, it won't count. Make sense? If you can stand and you're sitting, it won't count for you. And for Nafal Salah, you're going you're to get half the reward. So why go through a hassle when you can stand? But if you can't, then you're going to get full reward, inshallah. Uh, no, Sister Mariam, you don't have to. If it's woman-only event, everyone's a lady, no guys, then you don't have to wear hijab, inshallah. Is Tarawi, it's Nafal, more likely? And Allah knows best, Jazara. Okay, Sister Harim, no worries, inshallah. Amin, amin. Thank you for the lovely duas. That's really, really sweet of you. Sister Sarah, we don't have to have to write the shaking hand part. We can't, okay. And then